Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting, January 13, 2021. I'd like to ask our superintendent to lead us in the, board, in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We don't have any changes in the meeting agenda, so we'll move on to our first public participation up to 30 minutes in length. Mrs. Christine Giacovino. Uh, good evening. Can, is it on? I guess it's on. Um, I was, um, I, I don't think it no. doesn't sound like it's on, right? <laughs> is, that on? is it on is it on oh it'll be heard on the screen that's wonderful um i'm just i i just was i'm planning on coming to the meetings every month anyway to try and stay connected so i've been really enjoying seeing them because you know um I guess a lot of discussion about transparency. All you really have to do is come here, and it's pretty transparent if you come. And I find out all kinds of interesting things. But um, in addition to this, I did start, um, I just went to my first um, anti-racism and diverse, um, social justice committee meeting this week with Mr. Uh, at the high school. And it was excellent, and that's what I wanted to tell you. And I wanted to thank you for starting this task force because I've been here before discussing insensitivity and inclusion and the problems that I thought we had. So I am very, very grateful that we are doing a task force. Um, and I'm only, at this point, I'm, I've only got a year and a half left here as a parent, and I'm done. So it's coming quite at the end of my time here. But um, I wanted to tell you that I'm pledging to do whatever I can, even beyond the time my boys graduate. And I was hopeful, and I know how difficult it is because of everything, obviously, that's happening in the world and in school. Um, if we could maybe try and meet a little more often um, the first meeting was this month, and our next meeting is March. And one thing that came out of the meeting, which was really excellent, and a lot of interesting uh, points of view, that were, it was a terrific meeting. Mr. Bernhardt did an excellent job. And we all kind of understand there's a problem, but we also understand this is an tremendously enormous problem to fix, of course, not only in Three Village, but everywhere. Um, but when I think about it after the meeting, I came home and I thought, you know, we were the first ones to be able to go to, back to school well, every day. And we were the Stop the Bleed, I think you're going to talk about it again. We're the only school that does that. We have the best security. We are able to do so many amazing things here. And I think it's important that we don't lose focus of that problem, even though other things are going on. And that we, I would hope that we could be able to maybe move a little quicker with it this year and maybe really commit to it in the next year to try and find solutions to the problems that we have. Okay, thank you. Um, may I? So thank you for your, for your comments and thank you for your support. And, and this is something that the district is deeply committed to. So well, the district level committee has actually met twice. And one of the reasons that I know Bill Bernhard was thinking of meeting in March is because he would like Dr. Roberts, who is our consultant, to be able to participate. So Dr. Roberts will be meeting with the district committee again on February 2nd. And because we only have a certain number of days with Dr. Roberts, we're trying to spread those out. So that's why Bill thought it would be you know, advantageous. Okay. So I think once Dr. Roberts meets with the committee, the committee will meet more frequently. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Christine. Would anybody like to speak at this moment? Anybody else? No? Okay. Moving on to the minutes. The minutes of December 9th, 2020. Can I please have a motion? Mr. Cornwright, Mrs. Gish, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to our reports. Uh, our student representative report, Jesse. So, oh, geez. <laughs> so, Happy New Year, everyone. This is my first report of 2021, and this is also the year that me and my fellow seniors graduate. It's pretty cool. Uh, for the last few months, I've put an emphasis on thanking everyone that made it possible for us to have a choice of being in person or remote, and I do this because it's really a big deal. So student government is one of the largest student clubs, and I want to call out something pretty amazing. We have still done all but two events we set out to do in a normal year. Those events might seem simple, but each come with modifications, yet it is still getting done. 
For example, we're turning what used to be known as Cooking for a Cause, which I'm sure pretty uh, a lot of people must know, um, into a virtual raffles for a cause this year. Uh, shameless plug. Um, other things that I learned of, low and moderate, moderate winter sports have started. Fishing clubs made some cool rods this week, and uh, Wind Ensemble is going to have a live stream concert. Uh, so make sure to tune in Tuesday night. Another shameless plug. Uh, not sure if everyone got to see the cool drone shot of the lanterns placed in the shape of a 2021, like uh, the year 2021, that lit up on the front lawn at the Electrical Light Parade. A group of amazing parents worked to organize lanterns and place the names of each 2021 student to soon, be, to soon graduate on them. A special shout out to Kelly Mortella for her ingenuity, vision, and getting that ball rolling. Lastly, unlike high risk sports with a fate unknown, midterms seem to be quite resilient and have found a way to happen, unfortunately. Uh, so the student body will be heads down prepping at the end of this month for that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, our next report is mental health and the bleeding control. And it's uh, Mr. Kevin Finity, Executive Director of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Athletics. Ms. Maureen Koss, Secondary Coordinating Chair. And Ms. Carrie Kilkenny, Elementary Coordinating Chair. Good evening, Board of Education and Central Office. Um, before I begin, um, I'd like to just bring a real recap on our athletics. Uh, I'm very happy to say that yesterday we had our first bowling match. We have a combined team. We have two bowlers from Ward Melville who combined on the Comp Squad bowling team, and they won yesterday. And today we had our first boys swim meet, which is the first home contest we've had in athletics since last February. Uh, and we won today as well, so I'm glad to say that and um, so it's been a real pleasure to finally see our low-risk sports uh, participating once again it's unfortunate that our high-risk sports are not participating at this time but it is my hope that we can show that we can you know participate and run our sports safely so I'm very excited and happy to report on that and again thank you for your support um, but we're here tonight to discuss physical education and health education and what all the great things that we do in our department and in our programs um, you know over the last few months I just wanted to say thank you to you because I get a lot of phone calls from other colleagues of mine in other districts and you know they ask me how are you uh, having students fully in school fully participate in physical education and health education and you know the answer that I really give them is it all started back in August when you the Board of Education and our central administration took the courage to make that decision and to provide us with the support and this, the necessities to to get that done so I want to say thank you for that as well um, but now to get started on our mental health initiative and our stop the bleed uh, again I'd like to introduce my colleagues mrs. cost and mrs. Kilkenny I'm very fortunate to have great uh, staff and support and we work really well together so we have a uh, quick and informative presentation to present tonight so and now mrs. cost thank you well, the background of, of these initiatives, in this day and age, there are, is certainly a lot of pressure on our students, both in and out of the classroom. We feel that it's important while we have them as a captive audience during the school day and for the 13 years that they are with us in, in, in school, that we address these issues in the classroom. Um, we are very fortunate to have a health education begin as early as third grade in the elementary level. So we can start to address some of these issues, as you can see, um, pressing issues, um, depression, suicide, bullying, um, relationship issues, sexuality issues, body image, media, and certainly most, most recently, you know, the, the um, pandemic that we are, we are unfortunately currently in. Um, and these all certainly affect the, the mental health of our students, and we feel it's in increasingly um, important that we make sure we address these issues for them. Good evening. So what happened was that in May of 2018, the New York State Education Department 
adopted the framework. And as you can see on the slide, uh, this is actually the framework that supports the New York State Health Education Standards. There are three keys to this framework, self-management, relationship, and then resource management. And they also came up with a corresponding guide. In this corresponding guide, uh, they ended up not only highlighting those three key components, but they summarized the mental health facts, and they also gave out specific points for the school districts to adopt or to take a look at and address within each district to help make sure that health education was going to be comp comprehensive through K through 12. So why is this important? We need to look at just a few stacks, uh, stats. Are. Um, half of the chronic mental health uh, conditions begin at age 14. Uh, and as we know, mental health uh, is becoming more common among our students. And 22% uh, of our youths at the height, you know, the secondary level experience some, storm, uh, some sort of form of mental disorder. Uh, and that's about one in five students. And just some facts for you to look at. I won't read all of them, but um, as you know, in the district, we have dealt with all these issues such as suicide, uh, depression, um, drugs and alcohol. And uh, so as you see, uh, our students are faced with challenges uh, from the elementary level to the junior high level and to at the high school level as well. And again, that is why the state and us have taken uh, initiatives to help uh, you know, strengthen and uh, improve the mental health awareness and uh, education that we can present to our students. Health education in the classroom, a lot of times is focused on the physical aspects. And I think people forget that mental health education is just as important. When you ask our students early in the years in health education, what is health all about? They automatically talk about nutrition and fitness and body systems. And they forget, they don't recognize or identify that mental health is just as important. We base our philosophy on health education using what we call the health triangle. And those three sides, we use an equilateral triangle because they're all equally important. Um, we use the physical side, the mental side, and the social side. PMS is our little acronym for the health triangle. <laughs> okay, so we... Uh, I went back through all my archives of years of being here and when we first started this initiative and came back with some of the most recent pictures. And I think this one represents uh, Three Village Central School District because it not only talks about some lessons that we do in health education, but it talks about, uh, as you can see, I'm sorry, it has uh, buildings and bulletin boards and what's going on in the buildings, what's going on in the classroom. Um, and as we move further on with some of the pictures, Maybe not. It's not working. Go ahead. Oh, we can click. Good change. Greg. <laughs> so I'm moving forward. No. Thank you, sir. Um, this was actually one of the first push-ins uh, that we did at the junior high. So there's pictures here from Jolinas and Murphy. And what we did is we adopted, in order to make sure that we were in compliance with the 2018 initiative, we wanted to make sure uh, that every single student, so we pushed in in all of the health classes and the physical education classes. And this was taking the physical education classes, one of the lessons, we came up with four lessons. And throughout the year, there was one per quarter. And this was happened to be one of them. It was called Walking in Your Shoes. And we took uh, the physical, all the physical education classes individually. And we did the lesson. And it, this was actually uh, taking a look at stigma and walking in someone else's shoes uh, when we were taking a look at um, mental health initiative for mental stigma. This is a critical health issues coping class. And we actually made our own m mindfulness spin um, rings that we would use and what I did is um, went out and purchased little beads uh, beads that had initials and I had them take their initial and then each uh, take a color 
and then they would wear that on their finger. So if they were feeling stressed or if they needed to take the one, two, three, four mo movement, or they just needed to take a breath or they needed to, I also told them to take another initial of someone who's very important in their life. Uh, and, and if you just needed them to be close to you that you could take a couple of seconds to take a breath, you know, or you know, mom tells me to step back for a minute so I need to take my one, two, three, four. Or the, uh, so the kids always had something with them. Um, we do rocks where they put their special word in that they may keep in their pocket. Uh, just something uh, that they can have that's tangible to remind them. Uh, all of our physical education staff had uh, SEL training, social and emotional learning training, uh, K through 12, and we incorporate those, uh, that training, into all the lessons that we do now, K through 12. In addition, we have wellness clubs, uh, K through 12, and these are run either through a guidance counselor, a social worker, or a health education teacher, and uh, they go through and they do many different uh, D many different events throughout their club uh, and it is a K through 12 club each building has one this year obviously is a little different as to what we're running and what we're not but um, usually it's a yoga and mindfulness they might be doing uh, their own puzzles of pieces of who they are uh, affirmation bracelets so they can um, that they wear uh, calming jars that they make stress balls that they make with little gel beads and things that they can have tangible so they have their coping skills Again, their little back pocket. So it's something, if something's going on, oh, I can use this. Oh, I can do this. Now I have this. So it's not only done in the health education classes, in the physical education classes, but also if they want to join the wellness clubs, they can. So this is basically everything that I just, <laughs> uh, that you saw in pictures uh, is also here. But I do want to highlight the last uh, bullet here, which is our PBIS. And our PBIS is extremely important because when this initiative came out in 2018, um, after discussing it with um, the cabinet here, I, I asked, well, what, do, what else, what do we already have going on? And um, I discussed this with some other people, and uh, we found out that we had done a survey in 2011 of what we are doing for our own mental health within the Three Village Central School District way prior to 2018 when New York State made this initiative. So that was um, really a, a, a great jumping off point that we had. Some of the other things that we do in our, um, we have our own particular wellness committee. And uh, we've done in the past anti-vaping campaigns. We've done podcasts on the district uh, and on the, that are placed on the website, which are health think tanks. Uh, our athletes have had um, training to help uh, awareness of uh, chemical substances and their abuses. Uh, we've also had um, our student center and our wellness counseling um, center have come into, gone on virtual field trips, gone into a class or we've gone to them. Uh, each building has their own autonomy and every building has their own culture and I think one of the things that this mental health initiative has been really great in, in making sure that we all can keep that our, our own identity as um, and the, but we also have a very clear district message moving forward we look to continue what we have been doing in the classroom in the gymnasium and also continue coordination with our social workers with our guidance department maureen and i have already been meeting with Aaron Con Connolly, with Linda Bergson, to really align everything that we are all doing, putting all the pillars together and trying to make it a cohesive and a comprehensive program across the district, K through 12. And, uh, this is a uh, list of our health and physical education teachers. They are an integral part of what we do. They're very dedicated and professional staff members who take their job very seriously and that is why I think our students uh, receive the best uh, health and physical education uh, possible and uh, also some special thanks to certain people uh, outside of our department um, in other departments in the school that have been uh, a, a great help to us to help with this initiative and uh, and again thank you as a district for your support in our mental health initiatives and physical education um, and now we're going to move on to stop the bleed should be quick. 
I'm going to call Mrs. Cost back to the podium, but before she begins, uh, it was really amazing last year to see this initiative take off the ground, and as Mrs. Cost will explain, it was a great hands-on experience for all of our students and a, a very uh, important skill that our staff and our students have learned, and uh, unfortunately something that we've had to learn in the given times, but uh, very important to us and um, I think very worthwhile to our students. So, Mrs. Cost. Um, as we all know, Stop the Bleed is uh, the initiative that we took upon ourselves last year, um, but the district has been doing this for many years. Uh, and what I've done is we've just uh, put together this very quick presentation of what we did, where we were, so the background, the goals, uh, the changes that we made, what's going to happen moving forward. So. This is just the statistic that we came up with and, and just to remind us why we do stop the bleed because someone can bleed out in three to five minutes um, and usually the average time that our first responders will arrive will be um, seven to ten minutes. So we have it within our power possibly to save a life. And this life skill, this life, um, life skills that we're teaching them is so very, very important. Um, in the past we've talked we've taught our students um, CPR and hands-only CPR and I can t I cannot tell you how many students have come back and, and told me that they have actually saved a life or they've actually had to do um, hands-only CPR so this is just another life skill uh, that we need to teach our, our students in order to be very good citizens so um, that was just a, a little uh, background as to why uh, we, we were starting to do this so we are fortunate enough to have the community partnership with Stony Brook. And this program was rolled out a few years ago to the faculty and staff first. Um, I personally remember attending the program myself with Mr. Vizzo as my partner. And we, and we worked closely together. Um, it was an amazing training and really eye-opening to see, um, you know, how quickly you, uh, you know, we ourselves, um, can, can be helpful in a situation while waiting for help to arrive. So once we were able to roll that out to the faculty and staff, then staff was trained, our physical education um, staff members were trained to bring it into the secondary um, grades 10 through 12 physical education classes. They received the first training in February of 2020. And, um, you know, unfortunately, right before school, and you know, school closed, um, you know, for in-person learning. So we were able to get a little piece of it, but we, we still are continuing to um, progress with this program moving forward. And how this came about was Mrs. Pettisic had, you know, this idea uh, to train our students and we went with it and with the support and help of, from Jack Blaum and his staff, uh, we were able to really put this together and uh, between Mrs. Cost and our teachers, there was a lot of planning and, and preparation that took place. And um, I'm happy to say that they were able to you know, get this off the ground and provide this to our students. And as Ms. Kilkenny said, we're going to continue to provide it for our future students as well. So, I'm just going to move it forward a little bit. So last year, uh, once we went through all of the planning, uh, the planning and logistics, uh, we ended up doing it for two days, an A day and a B day. Uh, day one was the understanding day, and day two was the application. And so, as you can see, we had uh, we were very lucky. All of the physical education staff was trained. Uh, we had the support from uh, all of the security guards supported and were there to help teach the classes with our physical education staff. We had two locations, the uh, boardroom for the principal at Ward Melville High School, as well as our yoga room downstairs, and we split them up into small groups so they would have better understanding. 
and they learned the basic concepts on day one. And then on day two, uh, they had the application where they were actually um, able to pack the wound, uh, do the direct pressure, and then they were able to also um, uh, place the tourniquets. So there was a lot of training. We even had some of our uh, students who are um, firefighters uh, come in and say, could I actually help? Which brought us to the next level of thinking about some peer training that went along with it. But it was very successful. And um, we also, we used many uh, different techniques for understanding. And one of them was uh, our exit tickets that we used. One of the questions that we asked on the exit ticket was, what did you think about the day? What did you think about the program? And um, the students were said, loved the program, thought it was very, very useful. Um, hope I never have to use it were some of the other comments that they, that they stated on there. But I just love this one because they thought it was awesome. It was the most useful skill I learned all year. Um, who would have known that we, you know, a couple of days, uh, a couple of weeks later, we would have uh, been uh, leaving because of the pandemic at that particular time. And as I said before, we couldn't get this project off the ground without the help of Jack Blaum and his security team. And having worked with our security team over the last 10 or 11 years directly, it really is a pleasure to work with them, to see them in action when there are emergencies in the school. But it was really great to see these people uh, train and teach our our students and uh, you know, our security guards bring you know all different types of uh, education and background to help us better our students. So I want to thank uh, Jack and his security team. So moving forward, we will continue to roll this out in the health education classes at the high school. This past summer, the health teachers were able to participate in a curriculum writing project, and they are currently implementing the program in the health education classes at the high school. There's been, you know, due to the circumstances, there are, is a limited hands-on training right now, but we are hopeful to move forward and be able to get the students, um, you know, fully um, embracing the program with hands-on training in the future. So just to reiterate the concepts that we learned, we talk about applying pressure with your hand, uh, making sure that you apply dressing or you pack the wound, and then you apply the tourniquet. So these are the main co concepts that um, all of our students are learning. And since last year we were able to do 10 through 12, we have decided, you know, at moving forward, we are ha teaching it now in the health classes. So when they come in in 10th grade, that is when um, all the students, because as of right now, uh, all the students except the 10th graders ha have this uh, life skill. And again, just another thank you to our team who helped uh, put this together and helped uh, train and learn and uh, help our security staff. Uh, teach our students this valuable lesson and uh, and again we cannot do this without your support so we thank you again um, for all that you do for us and um, it, it's always great to work where we have ideas we meet we brainstorm and uh, to get the support from you is uh, is really valuable and um, so we want to thank you for your time uh, we hope it was informative and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions
for the idea of sports. You gave our kids the opportunity to get out there and, you know, pra not practice, but, you know, condition themselves and work together and be like a team. So thank you for everything that you've all done. Thank you. I just want to follow up on Mr. Vizzo's comments. Thank you. Um, and, and just make the statement that our health and physical education staff are really second to none. And, and I want to thank the leadership, um, Kevin, Maureen, Carrie, for all that you are doing for our students in terms of mental health, but also in terms of the Stop the Bleed program, which has been a beautiful partnership between our, our staff and our security staff. I've never seen a group of people work together so beautifully and in, um, to help our students to be able to help their community. So thank you. Thank you for a very informative presentation. Do we have any other comments and questions? Okay, moving on to items for board discussion. Are there any items for board discussion? Seeing none, we'll move on to items for board action. Uh, D2021-2022 uh, school calendar, Cheryl? Yes. So um, the 21-22 school calendar isn't the best calendar, but it's not the worst either. So, and we really didn't have a lot of latitude because as many of you know, we need to have a total of 180 days in the calendar in order to re receive state aid. And in that 180 days, um, of course, we build in snow days and we also, um, can have up to four professional development days. So I'm just gonna go through the calendar briefly and then um, so if the board has any questions. So September is a very fragmented month, unfortunately, um, but we would start with Wednesday, um, the 1st of September being Superintendent's Conference Day and the second being a professional development day for our staff. Um, staff would be off on that Friday the 3rd. Um, Monday the 6th is Labor Day. Um, now Rosh Hashanah falls on the 7th and the 8th, so school is not going to begin until Thursday the 9th of September. Um, the following week on the 16th, um, there is Yom Kippur, so um, at that point um, school would not be in session. October is a little less fragmented. Um, the 11th of October is Columbus Day, and uh, at this point, um, we've been asked, I've been asked by several, um, can we change the name of Columbus Day? I don't have the authority, nor does the Board of Education to do that. That is a federal holiday, and until we receive um, information from the federal government to be able to, or the state, to be able to change that. So right now it is designated as Columbus Day. Um, November, we go um, on the 11th, is Veterans Day, that is a Thursday. Um, then we have a full week of school, and then the following week is the Thanksgiving break. Um, we would have that Wednesday off, um, and then as we have had for, I believe, the last 11 or 12 years. So we didn't really want to um, remove that um, that day. In December, unfortunately, um, it's a little short, so um, the 24th will begin the beginning of vacation, and that will run right through um, the 2nd, and then students will return on Monday, January 3rd. Um, the 17th would be Martin Luther King Day. Um, February break would occur between the 21st and the 25th of February. Uh, March, it's going to be a long run for kids um, and for staff um, because it looks like a full six, six and a half weeks before we get into April break. Um, unfortunately, this year, we are not going to be able to be off on Holy Thursday, which has been a day that we've been off um, pretty much um, in the history of Three Village for a long time. And I just want to let you know that we, we do recognize that it is a sacred day for Catholics um, when the faithful are encouraged to attend Mass. However, it is not one of the holy six holy days of obligation, but we will honor staff and students as an exempt if they so choose to be off on that day. So we would be uh, amenable to that. We understand and respect that. Um, then we go into May. May um, 30th is Memorial Day. 
Um, and June is a little unique this year. Um, you probably have heard from the state um, that Juneteenth would will be honored. Now Juneteenth, um, which would normally have been on, uh, which is on Sunday, according to the governor, must be honored on Monday. This year, Juneteenth falls on a Saturday, but the governor has said that um, we do not have to be off on the Friday prior. So that is a decision that has been made um, by, the, by the governor, and we must be compliant as a public school system. So, um, which is, you know, what we will do, and the regents' exams will work around that, that period of time. There are three snow days built into the calendar. Hopefully, we won't need to use them. In the past, we haven't really been using many of our snow days. So I think this is the, represents the best calendar that our district can have at this point. So I, if, if the board is willing, um, maybe we can move forward. And if there is approval from the board, um, I will put a messenger call out this week so that the uh, community is aware and that um, plans can be made. Okay. Any questions or concerns? So we'd like to approve the calendar for 2021, 2022. So Dr. Kerman, Mr. Vizzo, all in favor? Opposed abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. Move on to item E, approval of outside service provider for social emotional learning curriculum. Yes, um, this curriculum is um, proud to be primary. It, it was reviewed and vetted by our uh, social work staff and by our psychologists, and it is being highly recommended as the program of choice. Okay. Can I please have a motion approved? Mr. Conrad, Ms. Ms. Gish, all in favor? Opposed abstentions? Motion passes. F, 2021-2022 new courses and course name changes requests. Yes, there, there is one. Um, in the past, um, we had AP World History, with, which is ninth grade. Um, that title is being changed to Advanced World History. We are not permitted any longer because of changes in the College Board to use the AP designation. Um, however, we do recognize the rigor of that course, and it will be treated the same way um, in terms of quality points, um, GPA, um, that we do with our math theory class, and we think that is the fairest way to proceed. Um, so moving forward into the new year, it'll be called Advanced World History, H. It will culminate in AP exam. It will, um, it will Mr. Conreich, um, in 10th grade, okay. yes. The tenth grade class will because it used to be a two-year course, and now it um, College Board has revised that. And is the tenth grade one called AP? It is. Okay. It is. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. A motion. Ms. Gish, Mr. Cornreich, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. Uh, G um, affiliation agreement with Baylor University. Yes, this is for our speech pathologists for their clinical experience. Okay, have a motion, Mr. Cornwright, Mr. Vizzo, all in favor? Opposed abstentions, motion passes. Appro each approval of extension of contract with outside provider for special education services. This uh, extension is with the provider that we've used in the past or with the same terms and conditions. Okay, have a motion. Ms. Gish, Mr. Vizzo, all in favor? Opposed abstention? Motion passes. I, acceptance of donations. We have three donations. Two of them I mentioned last month, but we did not have them on the agenda. We had just received them the day of the board meeting. Um, one is a donation of uh, $1,000 in Amazon gift cards from Kerry Schweibert to the, uh, which will go into our food pantry. Um, uh, $5,000 in Target gift cards from Suffolk Transportation uh, to support needy families also th will uh, be distributed through our food pantry. By the way, all the work on, on with the food pantry and the, and the collecting and the disbursement of the uh, gift cards has been through Erin Connolly's office, and uh, she, she's just been terrific with that. So, um, And that's that's been a lot of work, so I uh, just wanted to mention that. And uh, also a check in the amount of $100 donated by Joshua and Ellen Miller uh, to the Minnesota Elementary School Allied Fund. Okay. Thank you very much. So moved. Dr. Kerman, Mrs. Gish, all in favor? 
Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. Jay, declaration of surplus equipment. Uh, we have a few items. One is a uh, old dump truck, uh, a portable basketball hoop that we had uh, spoke about that had previously, uh, about 20 years ago, been donated to us, and now we've uh, given it to another school district who could use it. Um, uh, a piece of equipment in our mail room, and the rest are some um, uh, some equipment from one of our technology rooms at uh, Wood Mobile High School. Okay. Have a motion. So moved. Ms. Gish, Mr. Kornreich, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. I'd like to move K through, oh, if that's, if no objections. Okay. <laughs> RP458A, RP458B, RP459C, RP466C, and RP467. So moved. Dr. Carmen, Mrs. Gish, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. And then I'd like to move P through T together. Uh, the claims order report, district treasury report, financial reports, extra classroom activity treasurer's report, and transfer of funds report. Mr. Vizzo, Mr. Kornreich, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. You approval of agreement for retired TBTA employee? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, this is approval this is an approval as a result of the discussion that we had in exec session to assist us moving forward in that area so moved. dr carmen mr vision all in favor opposed abstention motion passes approval uh the approval of appointment agreement of interim math chairperson so as a result of as a result of uh, some of the personnel matters that you will be accepting later on, uh, we will have a vacancy that uh, will require an interim. Okay. Motion? Ms. Dr. Carmen, Ms. Bevlinka, all in favor? Opposed abstentions? Motion passes. W, approval of pre charge stipulation of settlement employee A. So this is approval for um, a, a settlement that we discussed in exec session. Um, okay. During the last board meeting, okay. have a motion. And the person has identified in confidential uh, schedule A. Okay. Motion, Ms. Gish, Mr. Vizzo, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. And X approval of pre-charge stipulation of agreement employee B. And this is about this is the same thing, but the it's a different employee who has an identified in confidential schedule B. Okay. Um, have a motion, please. Ms. Gish, Mr. Vizzo, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. Uh, why personnel matters? One instructional. Nothing unusual with this. Okay. Have a motion. Mr. Cornwright, Mrs. Gish, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. Two non instructional. Have a motion. Mr. Vizzo, Ms. Gish, all in favor? Opposed abstentions. Motion passes. Z recommendations of special of committee on special education for the dates. Mr. Cornreich, Mr. Vizzo, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. And recommendation of so AA. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the dates stated. Um, Mr. Cornreich, Mrs. Gish, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, any other informational items of interest? No? Seeing none, we'll move on to our second public participation up to 30 minutes in length. Does anybody, would, would anybody like to speak? No? Can I have a motion for adjournment? Dr. Kerman, Mrs. Gish, thank you very much. Have a great night.